So my name is Elias. I work as a security champion in Contega SSO, which is the subcompany of Contega. I also think about privacy, referencing the first talk. And today we're going to talk about security by design. So this quote by Gary McGraw really captures the essence of what we're talking about today. It's really hard to do security, and as developers, we screw it up all the time, unfortunately. Uh, but we can't test our way out of this. We can't patch our way out of this. We have to engineer our way out of this problem. And we do that by creating software that doesn't suck as much, if we, if we can afford it. And what is insecure software anyways? It comes from software defects. And we can say we have two kinds of defects. We have bugs, which can be cross-site scripting on line 100 in the code. And we have design flaws, which is the topic today. And this is about architecture. This is about what happens earlier in the agile, not so agile life cycle. But really, it's more accurate to view this in a spectrum. And all along the spectrum, we make mistakes. And for the bugs, we have a lot of tools created to automatically find these mistakes for us. We have static code analysis. We have dynamic security testing. We have testers poking our code. And also, we have a dependabot and whatnot. But on this side, on the right side, it's not so easy to detect mistakes. We have manual procedures like threat modeling or architectural risk analysis, which probably mean the same thing. And today we're going to focus on how to make less mistakes on the right side over here. So security is really about trade-offs. You don't have infinite money, and security costs money. And any program has risks. And what's a good idea is to think about risks and be conscious of what could go wrong so you can make a decision instead of working blindly. And patching and whack-a-mole doesn't really work. That's reactive. And instead, we should be proactive uh, and think about risks and make a decision. And remember, you don't necessarily need a threat agent, an advanced hacker, to have a security issue. You can have risks anyways. Your system can bleed the data. You can get a privacy fine. So today, we're going to talk about some design patterns that can hopefully help us reduce the amount of mistakes we make over on the right side of the spectrum, which was flaws. Here's the definition. Security by design is to build security into the software while we're designing it, instead of putting a broken thing into a network. And we're going to run through these 10 principles uh, or software patterns, which I learned from this book by Lauren Kornfelter. But actually, they're not from 2021 when this book came. These are ancient. I think they're at least 50 years old. They were created by some really smart people in a paper in like 1975 who probably stole it from someone else. But they were still really smart people. And these are great principles to have in the back of our mind. Remember that these are context sensitive. So these are not laws in any way. But these are, these are things you could be conscious about. The first one is reluctance to trust. I think th this is maybe the most important principles, because this, this is the fundamental for so many other things like defense in depth and least privilege and all the things we see in the systems we use today. So when you get an input from a user or from another server, what do you do with the input? You just assume it's good? We should be aware of our trust boundaries. We need to have a certain level of trust to get anything done, because we can't really have zero trust. For example, when you're hosting your code in the cloud, you have to have some level of trust that Microsoft doesn't screw things up. Or if they screw things up, they take responsibility. And responsibility is an important factor. We have responsibility as developers. And we should take responsibility. And this is about security culture. The are you sure dialogue is a really bad pattern. It's also bad in, from a UX perspective, because then you, put, you, 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 enable, you don't enable the user to do what they want. They have to make the security decision. Don't do that. Then we have least information. This is about privacy. Don't use the information you don't need. And we have some good example from the industry. Everyone has 
OAuth 2.0 running on their phone, which has granular scopes. And the new European EID framework uses zero knowledge proof, which is about this principle. And let's be honest, not really if, but when your program fails, what happens then? How is your error handling? Make sure that when your system fails, it ends up in a secure state. We can learn from the real world. If you have a fuse box, we have physical properties to make sure that your house doesn't burn down. And when you're, you're, if you're driving a boat, you should probably use the dead man's switch. So when you fall out, or if, it stops. Secure by default. So when we deploy our software, what's the initial state? And this should probably be secure. That's better. And if we don't, bad things can happen. A few years ago, Raspberry Pi had passed WD as the default password. I remember a friend of mine, he was setting up his stereo and he wanted to have a Raspberry Pi to display the, the cover of the uh, album from Spotify. And he just connected his Raspberry Pi to the internet and within two minutes, it was part of a botnet. So, so we had to shut it down and start all over. So this is fixed now, by the way. Then there's complete mediation. This one is really easy to understand. It's about consistent checking. It's, it's not really any use to have a secure front if you can just go in the back door, which is secured by Cheeto. And this is not really that easy to do in distributed systems or in systems. The ideal thing is to use what's called a bottleneck or a guard, where you have one piece of software that takes care of the security decision. But this is not always possible, so you have sort of several levels of ways to do this, like having equal code that checks the same permission. Then we have the least common mechanism. I spent some tr time trying to understand this while reading it from the book. Um, but the idea here is that when you have several different entities, you want to isolate them from each other, ideally. And from our industry, we can look at virtual machines versus containers. So virtual machines, are properly isolated from each other, and the containers, they share some of the same OS. But this is also an example of a trade-off because containers are way, way smaller and way, way faster, so we're using them everywhere. The cloud is containers, but they're not without issues. So this has been a trade-off that our industry has made to do awesome things. And then let's talk about AI. You can't have a talk today without AI, and this principle, allow lists over block lists, if we look at ChatGPT, we can see that with GPT-3 and 3.5, OpenAI screwed this up. They were trying to make a list of all, of all the bad things that ChatGPT is not allowed to do. And that's an infinite list. There's an infinite amount of bad things. And they have learned from this. So with GPT-4, now we have a list of things it's allowed to do instead. And that's a manageable size instead. And then we can look at the system as a whole. And there's a great book by Adam Sholstack, which uh, is about what we can learn from Star Wars. Star Wars are great movies. We all love them. Uh, but they have made some mistakes that we shouldn't make. We should learn from them. So the Death Star had a, no, no I don't remember <laughs> the exact details, but the whole idea of the plot was the blueprint, which had the secret entrance to the heart of the Death Star. And we should make sure that that doesn't exist in our systems. So you shouldn't rely on your design keep being secret for it to be secure. That's really, really fragile, security by obscurity. That's not to say you can't have secrets. Then, this is also uh, in general software engineering. Keep it simple. Just Italian pizzas, really simple, really excellent. So when I, these are the takeaways I want you to take from this talk. Security is about risk management. These design principles are not complete, by the way. They are context sensitive, and they are about trade-offs, all of them. Be proactive and ask yourself what could go wrong before you do something, instead of sitting afterwards and oops. Thank you.